What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 11. We're starting today's some stuff on the back of the drubbing at home to Spurs. 12 games to go. The gap is now 6 between our rivals Leicester and Fulham in 19th place as well. The Saints are down. They've been shocking all season long. Only 11 points on the board. I often find that in career mode as well. You know, one team is always absolutely abysmal. The other two in the bottom three aren't too bad. But uh, the team that are rock bottom are normally rock bottom by quite some distance. So Southampton surely down. But two spots certainly still up for grabs, if you will. It's like the worst lucky bag you could ever get. A <laughs> relegation to the championship. So... First game of today's episode on the back of the 5-1 loss at home to Spurs. And it was a big one. Brentford, West London in the community stadium. And heading into the game, relegation 6 point, 12 games to go. Both teams desperate for a win. Only one win in 2023 thus far. That coming against Newcastle away from home. Well, after a lackluster first half, I fired wide with Morgan Gibbs-White. Josh De Silva opened the scoring for the Bees and I struggled to create the chances I often do. Still trading by a goal. Strakosha denied Brennan Johnson. Down by one with seven minutes on the clock. Javier Hernandez, the Mexican, makes it 2-0 Brentford as he celebrates with Thomas Franca. And the Bees are going to claim a huge, huge, huge three points. We did see this over five and a half minutes ago, and I want to touch on this as well. Uh, Morgan gives White hacked down by Rico Henry, the left back here, for a straight red card. Oh, is this the third red card we've seen now uh, from the AI against us? We saw a straight red card away in the Brighton game, and then Theo Walcott was sent off for two yellow cards when he took on Southampton at home as well. Um, anyway, South <laughs> sorry, Brentford went 3 it up here <laughs> I was thinking Henry's been sent off. There's a chance we could at least get a consolation. If not, you know, it's a glimmer of hope there. Brentford went down to 10 men and the third goal was scored by them as well. 10 men, Brentford with 7 minutes to go. Didn't think we'll shut up shop. We thought, no, not in Forest. They're so bad defensively. We'll get another goal. Even with a man disadvantage of Josh Silva bagged his brace. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> I've been terrible at FIFA this year. Oh, God. As you can see, the loss there. <laughs> and the gap is now four with 11 games to go. I can't buy a win. And Joe Worrell comes to me and says, Hi, boss. Hope you don't mind me catching you like this, but the lads have asked me to talk to you. They're a bit worried the club isn't meeting their demands. This doesn't feel like a team that's motivated to win anything this season. We were hoping you'd be able to let us know what plans you had to improve the situation. And I was like, Joe, this is not the time. This is not the time to bemoan a lack of silverware. Forget that Carabao Cup run. It didn't exist. It was a fever dream, honestly. <laughs> That run to the semis didn't actually exist. We just dreamt it. How could we possibly reach the final four of a cup competition? We're awful, Joe. Accept it, mate. But goodness gracious, I did need this, though. Uh, off the pitch, Dave Bell, we uh, changed his position to centre-half. And um, as you can see, he grew a couple of ratings to 64 overall. This guy is a centre-back, man. No doubt about it. He's six foot five, and, and yeah, possibly, you know, he could be turned into a decent anchor man. But to me... He's a strong, old-school Scottish centre-half. So, yeah, Dave Bell is in. And our defence can't get any worse right now. So, I'm going to throw the kid in. Why not? Because at the moment, Forrest are going down. You look at our remaining fix. You see there in March, this is a huge month for us. Because April, we've got Palace away, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, and then our rivals, Leicester, as well. These three games here in March are absolutely massive. We've got to make sure we get at least two wins out of the three yards against Wolves, West Ham and Crystal Palace as well. But yeah, briefly, just very briefly, yesterday I put out a tweet about the red cards on Twitter and um, I asked you guys what you think about, uh, you know, your opinions on the uh, first feed. We got some DMs from you guys, uh, a few comments as well. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, it seems like a lot of you guys are having a similar experience to me right now, which is that the games... 
uh, are very similar to how they were in FIFA 22. You know, they're really fun to play, don't get me wrong, but they're still a little bit too open, still a little bit too end-to-end, -to -end, still a little bit too goal glut, goal festy, if you will. So, yeah, that's definitely uh, something I think EA needs to look at, but also the red cards as well. You know, I mentioned I'm, I'm pleased the AI are being a little bit reckless now. I'm pleased the AI are going to ground because they never used to do that on Ultimate. I mean, literally, the square button was off limits for the AI. They would never slide tackle. So now I'm pleased to see they are putting in some slide tackles, but they need to tone down the recklessness a little bit. I think that Rico Henry lunge there was just completely brain dead. Anyway, uh, yeah, second game of today's episode, Wolves at home. Massive, absolutely massive game against Wolves. Obviously, just sacked Bruno Lage in real life, of course. I think the right call as well because, you know, Wolves this season struggled. They struggled for a while back in the last season as well. Really, really poor. And as we know, they just can't score. They brought in the veteran striker, Diego Costa. We'll see if he's the answer to their problems. But heading into the game, we led by a goal at the break. Unfamiliar territory. Forest were winning a game. Taiwo scored the opener, but Wolves would find their level with 15 minutes to go. And with six minutes on the clock, a chance to win the game. Rodri beats Nathan Collins, rolls it across, and Johnson denied by Jose Sar. And that was the moment. That was the game. And it slipped through my fingers. That was the moment. I had to win that game. And I blew it. I should have done so. There weren't that many chances in the game. And what you'll notice as well is I've dropped the half length down from five minutes to four minutes. Well, because again, just as I mentioned there, that the games have got far too many goals. And, you know, so we do need to reduce the amount of goals we're seeing in the games for realism. But what a missed opportunity there, man. Now, we do extend the gap between the bottom three to five points on the back of the point there. So it's not a disastrous result, but... Lord knows a win would have been huge. We would have seen us extend the gap to seven points with ten games to go. Big missed opportunity right at the end through Brennan Johnson. And I fluffed my line. So, following game, West Ham United away in London. Taking on David Moyes side. They scored a late winner against me in the reverse fixture. Our only win in 2023 has come away from home though. And I needed my first win since that Newcastle game. And heading into the game, I was brave in the early stages. 15 minutes in, clearance off the line as it was still goals. We kept the chance alive, recycled possession. Tywo scoring the game against Wolves, finds Johnson and offloads to Jesse Lingard, who rejuvenated his career at his very ground. And you knew he was going to score again. Jesse with the opener, fed through by Brennan, shows the respect, and Forrest take the lead. That's only his second goal since the contract extension. He's not been as good since he got that deal. Shock horror. How often do we see a player play for a contract? And as soon as he gets it, he takes a seat, uh, a step back. But hey, we don't mind. Jesse Lingard gets a goal here, and it's a big one. Seventh of the season, and Forrest have the lead. But we've led in many of our games this season and have failed to win them. Why is that? Well, it's because our defence is shocking. And 30 minutes in, as West Ham win a corner, Lucas Bacata holds off Taiwo. Suchek finds Ruben Neves. And what a ball by the former Wolves midfielder. Rolls it through to giant Lucas Scamacca, who broke our hearts at the city ground and opens the scoring here. West Ham won, Nottingham Forest won. Now, lead could not last until the break. So, I thought, you know what? Just got to keep on attacking. I can't defend, so keep on attacking. Past the hour mark, still tied at 1 1. Minetti in from Stad Haram in January finds Johnson. Lovely slip through ball to Taiwo. Back to Brennan Johnson. Great save by Alphonse Areola. Still 1 1. But again, the chance remains alive. And Marshall tries his luck from 20 yards, but puts it off target. Still, it's 1 1. And we we're facing the prospect of back-to-back -back games without a loss and back-to-back -back draws. Not disastrous against Wolves and West Ham, but a chance to win blown with a minute to go in stoppage time. St. Maximin holds him off, finds Pekata closing in! West Ham lead in stoppage time. Doxy boy hangs his head. He's devastated. Oh, God! Lucas Stan Collymore for Cater makes it 2 1 West Ham and we lose again. Forest.
Forest are going down. I can't believe it. From leading by a goal in a game where I played really well. To Skamaka getting the leveler and Piketa with the win. And it was so funny because I had to pay homage to that fantastic piece of Martin Tyler commentary. For those of you that aren't aware what goal I was referencing there, I'll leave a link to it in the comment section down below. Liverpool versus Newcastle. Stan Collymore's last second winner. Um... Oh my god, it just, it literally, that moment there reminded me of that San Collymore goal. It really did. So, Maximine uh, playing the role of holding the ball up, offloading to Piquetta, and it seemed as though he dribbled in. He took it in slow motion. I was like, it's gonna, it's gonna score. He's gonna score. As soon as St. Maximine picked him out, I knew he was gonna score. Piquetta with a Stan Collymore esque goal. Forrest are going down. Forests are going down. They got thrashed on Monday night against Leicester in the East Midlands Derby. We saw it. 4-0, uh, I think it was. And I, j I, j I just can't stop the AI. This is the hardest FIFA I've ever played. And it's it's showing. It's telling. And at the moment, after another game which we lose from a leading position, another game we lose later on. How many of those have we had this season? Oh... Forests are going down. Forests are going down. You see our fixtures in April. We've blown two big chances to win. And when you look at our fixtures to come next month, I, I can't see how we we'll win any of those games. Forests are going down. Following game, City ground, Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa. And I thought, okay, all right, final home game of March. Let's see what we can do. Well, Brennan Johnson gave us the opener. And I should have went 2 it up half an hour in. Taiwo fires one. I thought we should have had a penalty as well because Taiwo was taken down with a slide tackle. Yes, the shot had been released, but how many times have you seen in my videos? I'm penalised for a foul in my area when I'm trying to block a shot and the defender follows through and takes the man down. It's a penalty for the AI. Yet a goal kick for the AI when it's the other way around. That's so not fair. But even so, Forrest won with a nil. We still led... And right before the break, he's on to his critics. Poor run of forms is the contract extension. But it's 2-2 two two for Jesse Lingard. And Forrest are tuning up at the break on Gerard's side. Right, I was thinking. Tune it up. Half time. We can't defend, but surely with 45 minutes to go. I'm not going to throw away a win again, am I? Dean Henderson, big save, 11 minutes after the restart, keeps us still leading by two. And on the stroke of the Almock Villa, desperate to get back in the game. What a clearance off the line from Rodri Brown. He's a little lad. I mean, he's five foot seven, but he let like a salmon to head that header off the line. And look at how much I was panicking here, man. I was passed the ball out of play for a corner. The nerves were getting to me. 25 minutes to go. I'd stumbled out of blocks in the second half. Villa had looked lively, but we were still leading by two. And from defence to attack, Rodri slides through Brennan Johnson. Get him! Free Aston Villa nil. Oh, goodness gracious me. This is the hardest fever I have ever played. But Forrest win at the city ground for the first time in 2023. And it's the Academy boys who get the dagger. Forest free for the nil, but I love these celebrations full time. I love this. I really do. Look at it. Look at these reactions. Nothing. Stone faced. Yes, the scarves are raced at the trend end, but I love that reaction there. Big big win. Massive win. Really, really felt I deserved it despite Villa's fast attacks in the second half. What a header by Rodri Brown off the line, though, man. But I love this reaction at full time. I love this post-match press conference here. I'm not going to stand here and say what will or won't happen. The players don't need me putting extra pressure on them. We'll leave things as they are right now and not say that we're going to kickstart a run of form after our first win since January. Lord knows we needed it. Joe came to me saying, uh, thanks, you know, things seem to be happy your dressing room now. I was like, mate, calm it down. It's our first win since January. But 
Forest for a big win there. Now extend the gap to seven on Leicester and eight on Crystal Palace with eight games to go. But we have played a game extra on the teams below us right now. So they've got the game in hand there. And, you know, at the moment, the team I'm, the team I'm looking at most at the moment is, is definitely Crystal Palace, you know. I mean, I think in the teams below us right now, a huge game at Selhurst Park is our final one today to start the run of April. But you see our fixtures here. Arsenal away, Chelsea at home, Liverpool away, and then Leicester at home as well in April. Crystal Palace are without a shadow of a doubt the team I'm worried about the most below us in the table. And so how fitting it is, our final game of today's episode is Forest pick up a big win there against Aston Villa. And our first one at the city ground in 2023, we face Vieira's side at Selhurst Park. We knew if we could win this game, we could pull away and extend the gap to eight with seven games to go. But lose it and we're in deep trouble as Palace will still have a game in hand. Massive pressure at Selhurst Park. First chance of the game fell 22 minutes in. Great strong challenge by Dave Bell, the kid, and away we go on the break, but Johnson dispossessed. Palace win it back. Quick ball through to Wilfred Zaha. Rolls through Odson Edward. And from attack to defence, and we're down by a goal. A quick little break stopped. Quick little ball through by Zaha. Great little quick finish from Edward under pressure. And Palace lead. Vieira, like me, knows what's at stake. Not letting his emotions get the better of him. Odds on Eduard, the former Celtic striker, makes it 5-26. in 26. Palace lead by a goal. Alarm bells ringing. Yes, we had that big win against Villa. But we can't afford to lose this game. Nine minutes to go before the break. Looking for our first chance of the game. Rodri down the left. Dinks one in. Finds Brennan Johnson. Great little assist for Mangala. And for his third of the season, our Belgian midfielder makes it 1-1. What an assist from Brennan Johnson. A brilliant little flick and it's 1-1. And in the second half, of very few chances. We had a couple of opportunities to win the game through corners. Great stop on Johnson from the header. Nico Williams floats this one in. It's headed away. But McKenna finds Mangala. Off to the 16-year-old Dave Bell. And it was inches wide from the beard. Oh, I thought I won it. I thought I won it. But that reaction from both managers says it all. The point does neither team a favour, but it could have been a lot, lot worse. Final score at Selhurst Park, Crystal Palace 1, Nottingham Forest 1. We stopped the rot with no defeats in our last three games, but still just the two wins in 2023. And big missed opportunities today to pull away. I said Forrest are going down earlier. I certainly felt that way after Bacata's late winner, but with seven games to go in the Premier League season and two episodes remaining, we remain in 15th. The gap is seven. We still play the game more than everyone below us in the table. Oh, don't go anywhere, man. Two episodes to go, seven games to go, and our next three games are, uh, who we got again? Oh, yeah. Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool. Fun, fun, fun. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Much love to you. And I'll see you for another episode of Season 1 with four of the final seven very soon.